Hello everybody, this is JackB1024, and welcome to episode 23 of our Dynamic Factory. So in today's episode, we're going to be finishing up our dictionary over here, and setting up our output from here to connect to the train station, so we can send a train uh, to the supply station. And hopefully we can set up uh, at least our iron ore mine, so that when the train comes here, uh, it can... Uh, figure out which station is the destination station and send the train there So let's get started. So at the end of the last episode we started making this uh, dictionary setup over here so we can index uh, Each row by either the a signal. Well, that's the only way we can uh, Index each row is by the a signal, but when we're trying to read from the values that are stored in the memory cell we can use the uh, signal train at station signal which is going to be used to tell us uh, the train number that we get from our train stops now there is actually one other I think while I was doing this I realized we also need to get uh, the train data when no equals not greater than there we, go. we need to get the train data for that row and I'll explain how that'll all work not to the output, we need to do the input of that one. Green line up there and red line there. Because it's annoying to make a bunch of circuit wires. Gotta get rid of the book. Just take that off the blueprint. And of course, forget to save it. And we'll just do... yep, there, good. Okay, that's them all set up. Um, these don't seem to be set up correctly. Yep, that's right. And I'll add my reset combinator here so I can reset all the memory cells. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to have these work as a sort of uh, circular array. So we'll have something that'll check index 0 and I'll write something to it, and then the next time it'll check index 1, index 2, 3, 4, 5, till the end, and when it goes to the end, it'll start back at the start. And what we'll do is we'll check, uh, is this row empty? And if it's empty, cool, we can store where the destination for our certain train should be. If it's not empty, we'll check the next row. And so that's what this is going to be used for, is just checking each row. This one's set for writing to the row, and this one's set for looking up our dictionary, uh, which one stores uh, where a train is, well, where a train should go. Which also conveniently will tell us which row it is. No, it won't. A0, where's the A signal come from? It comes from here on the red line. Hmm. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to change that. That's annoying. Okay. That'll be the fastest way to change it. The issue is we're going to need to get our A signal in on the input to this one. So, if we grab it on the green line, does that not reach? That's probably one short. So we'll move it over here. There's our A value, and now we need our memory output. Yep. Good, so that gets us our A values, gets us our memory data. Um, do we want our A values and our memory data into this row? We might actually. Yeah, I think we will. So. Oop. 
which actually means instead of connecting it like that, connect it like that and wind that one through. That looks nicer. So this way, uh, all our memory cells get access to both the index as well as the uh, train signal number. So when we read, I got one up wrong. Uh, when we read, you know, train 20 tell us where it needs to go and it tells us that it needs to go to station, let's say station four. Uh, it will also tell us that the index that that was read from is index, you know, 10 or five or whatever it is because it'll read the A value out the output as well. So there's our input lines and green for our output lines. Okay. So we've got this, we've got that. Um, what's the next step we're gonna need? We're going to need to get what the train is currently at the station. We'll need to bring that over. I think that goes to here, yes. I'm trying to think if anything else goes to this green line. Doesn't look like it. Oop, don't connect it that way. You've got already something on you. Mm, it's connected like this. Might need to run over and just pick up another stack of both signal wires. At the moment. Where do we want this to go to? Let's go yeah, over here. Signal hasn't come through. You've got it. You don't have it. You don't. How did it? Oh, it's on the red signal. Where does the green go to then? Okay, that's fine. I mean, this is going to have to get cleaned up anyway, so. Mm. Can I make another one? Yes. Disconnect that because that's not needed, and we'll connect that in that way. So you have it on the green signal, and you have it on the green. Good. Okay, that's that uh, fixed. Do we need copper plates for that? Hmm. Let's get some lighting over here. Mm hmm. So we've got our destination, we've got our source. <coughs> um, yep. So what's, how will we process this? I think well, trains will only leave the station when we tell them to. So once we know we have a train, we can store which train is going to be sending the um, which train we're going to be sending off, which would be this train, train 20. Then the next step would be to find where we can store it in this memory bank, which hopefully we have a spot for. And until we have a spot, we won't send the train off. Once it's stored in here, uh, we'll send it signals to say, okay, train 20, you're good to go to this station. So once we have a train, and we have a destination. Find where it goes. Once we've found where it goes in this dictionary, send it off. So the first check is that we have both the train and we have a destination. And actually, I do want some more large electric poles just so I can more easily move around uh, signals over long distances. So let's go get some copper plates. And let's actually refill on these circuit parts while we're at it. Stuff. 
stack should hopefully do of each. Should be a lot of copper, yep. And some steel. Yeah, that looks like it would be hopefully enough. So back over we go, and let's get this done. Okay, so if we have a train, we will output a red signal. Another line there. It can go to our, we need a destination. Technically, if we have one of these, we should have both. Yeah, because we need both to uh, have it pass through here. I'll connect it up like that and say uh, if we have anything, because we don't know what this signal is going to be, we just know that it's got a value. So once they're both got a value, that is red is 2. Red's greater than, let's just make it red equals two. Uh, output a green for we're good to go. And we'll just connect that to a light so that we can visually see that we're good to go. At that point, we'll want to make a request to a circuit that we'll have set up. Maybe here, just because there's not much room right here. Uh, so we'll probably just set it up here, which will be controlling this dictionary. So we need to tell it to go and with a value. Now, we don't care what sort of signal this is. You know, this is iron ore here, but we don't care about that because that just tells us uh, which station to go to. Or do we need to know what we're picking up? We might. Actually, we'll probably need to know both source and destination because from our source Oh no, just our destination surely because our destination tells us uh, in the binary part of the You know zero to well the 1 to 32 bit. It tells us which carriage uh, We're taking items out of Are they logistics bot enabled? Interesting. Um, so it'll tell us which carriage these items are going to get pulled out of. And so we need to look at that because that's the uh, carriages that we need to put the items into. Now we don't need to know what items we're putting into it because it'll be coming from just one station and each station it can only supply uh, one sort of item. Yeah. Mm hmm. So we'll get this value and we'll just convert it. And we'll set it to a D signal for the destination. That equals two, output that. Uh, let's change this actually. Output our D signal. Input count. And that can come from there. Okay, so this D signal will only get output when we've got a train waiting and we've got that. Actually, you need to output more than D. Fred equals to output. Hmm. Here we go. Here's what we will do. A little bit more complex, but slightly nicer. We'll set this to red as negative two. So now red is zero, is when both of these are enabled. It's going to output everything, which it will be getting the uh, signal D from here. And we will also pass through the, the train sig uh, signal train at station signal from there. So this is getting the two signals that we actually need. And this one, actually, we will negate it. Now the reason why this one's going to be a negative value 
is so that this dictionary works because uh, that way we can supply the positive value of the um, train number and it will make it equal to zero. So that's why I'm sending a negative into this. So from here, just connect this signal straight across. And this can be our circuit to uh, figure out where we should put the next signal in. So we're going to need uh, to know what index we're currently looking at. So how high can we go? So yeah, we'll start this at A is negative zero. That gives us negative four or five. Negative five, yeah. Which means as long as A is less than six, output A. Turn that into a memory cell. So that's the index that we're going to be looking up. That needs to connect across to there. And then green you can bring it back. Okay, so we're currently looking at row zero to see if it has anything. Now what we need to check is, does it have anything? If it does, check the next row. If it doesn't, we can stay on this row. So. Okay. If anything is greater than zero, output a single A and loop that back in. So that will progress it to the next one, as long as one of these memory banks has some data in it. And we probably want that on a timer because this isn't tick perfect. Um, Yeah. Let's do it very quick. It's not going to have to be too long. Uh, four ticks will be long enough. Input count. Green to there. Red to there. Where red is zero, output everything's input count. And connect that through. Cool. Now, okay, so now we want to check um, are we good to go? So we need the output of this. And this needs to be let's see. I'm trying to think of a good way to do this. Uh, let's make it an SR latch. And we will set it when we're good to go and reset it when we need to find the next spot. So, uh, the simple way to reset it is if this has any value, then we need to reset it because we're not good to go. Now, if it has no value, when it could have a value. So, we get our red value, give that a one tick delay. So if red is zero and there's nothing else, we know there's going to be a one tick delay. Okay. 
can we do? Yeah, we can. Okay. So Fred is one. I put every signal with a value of one. So we're gonna have a one tick delay. So this is gonna be one tick behind this because um, this will have the one tick delay. I don't want to obtain that signal though. Okay, that's fine. Move this onto the red line. Connect your red to there and your green to there. So when red is one, it will output everything with a value of one. Every signal this is getting and this is getting, which will mean it will output a signal of one. Yeah, and then what we'll do, get each thing, add nothing, output each thing. Cool, so this is gonna output one of a few values. It will output zero, when red does not equal one, it will output one when red equals one and no other signals are coming through. And it will output a number greater than one when red is one and we've got other signals coming through. So we know that this row is fine when this is outputting a value of one for its, uh, we'll make it a red signal. So where out, it is outputting red is one, but that's when it's in the uh, set, can no, yeah, set condition. So if red equals one output that we can set our SR latch. And that can go there. So there, our SR latch is ready. Which is good. That's the case that it should be in. Okay, and this can just show us which state our set reset latches, set or reset. So in this case, we know uh, that the memory cell this is telling us to read from, which is A is zero at the moment, that's a memory cell we can write to. And we know that this is the data we want to write to it. So when we're set and we've got that, we need to send this to this channel here and send back a signal that we're done. Okay, what I'm going to do now could this value change a lot? It's possible it could. But what we'll do, I'll make a memory cell and we will make a pulse generator. So that only the first valid value that we get uh, goes through. We want you to connect to the red line. I'll put a manual reset here, turn it off. Good. So this now holds uh, the data that we want to write. And it'll hold it for as long until we actually do the write. So the next thing we want is if we're ready to set it. So our set signal is set. Which we, yep, yeah, we can just read straight from the output. Um, we'll put an S is negative one. Get your output that all together. So if S is zero, I'll put everything. So that's us ready to do our right. We also want to read what channel we're doing our right to. So that's everything we need for our right. We'll do another pulse generator. Yep, 
which is ready to do our actual write. And then we need to just pipe this into here to do the write and a value over there to reset it. So if, any, uh, if anything is greater than zero, we'll reset that memory cell. And we will also yeah, write that into there. So that should be everything there set up. Now let's just reset this memory cell. And we will reconnect that. Good. So it's written it into our bottom row. Uh, that looks like it's written a positive value for our train signal. And this is now checking row two. Why aren't you checking row one? Row one is empty. Hmm. Slow that down a lot. Yeah, row one should be getting rid of two. Maybe it was too fast. Though it should be, it should have been fast enough, or uh, well, slow enough. Okay, now why is that not negative 20? Here we have negative 20, here we have negative 20. Oh, it's because of how our pulse generator works. Pulse generator doesn't deal with negative numbers. Hmm, that's an issue. Okay, so we have to make this one positive. I should have done a right just then. A is one. No, oh, here's our issue. Okay. Yep, yeah, this has been written to a couple of times now. Okay, reset everything. Oop. Cool. Okay, gonna have to think of how to fix that and also fix up our train signal number. We could send the positive and then we can just make our train stops negate the value that they're getting and send that through. And that's the easiest fix for that. Now we have to fix um, this value here. Because normally we're checking for a pulse, but this isn't going to, well. If S is zero output, everything's input count. Now that should work. Because that can stay there for a, wait, why are you? Because it's currently set. Mm.
You're connected via the green signal to there, aren't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is we need to know that this has some data that it wants us to write and S is zero. Well, we know that it's going to be writing a D signal because it's got to write the destination. So what we can do is we can check if D is greater than zero, output everything. And that should work. There we go. We write to index one. And now they should be waiting at index two. If I disconnect this again and connect it, it should write to index 2. And now it's going to be waiting at index 3. There we go, that works. That on and off. Now, when we do our write, we also need to tell this that it's now fine to send the train uh, to its destination. So we've got what D, we've got the destination, which we don't need anymore, but we will need. It'll be yeah on the red line. We want to pass through the train number. Put a signal there. We'll put this down here. Just out of range. Okay. So if we've got a value on our red line and we've got a value on our green line, well, we'll always have a value on the green line. But once we've got a value on the red line, we know we can send uh, the green line data through. So the green line and the red line. Once we get a destination, output everything. And we want to send this off to the train depot. So we'll send it on the red line. And this is the annoying part where I'm uh, reusing cables so I can't actually do what I would want to do, but that's okay. We can just rewire this in a sec. Let's get out green. And we'll wire our green signal to there and disconnect it. Now that it's no longer needed that way. Okay, so at this point we will have, yep, on our red line we will have a train signal number and the final and the destination for that train. Yep. So we've got our green, we've got our red. Let's just set up the train. So our green can go there and our red can go here. So on our green, we'll get everything, we'll add zero to it, and we'll output it. On our red, our red will have two signals. It will have, yeah, we're gonna need Probably four, I think. So we want to pass everything through. We also want to get our train signal and we want to negate that. So at this point we have what our current train is, we have all the signals and we have the negative signal for our train station. So now if these two add it up, if they equal zero, 
then this is the train we should be sending. Yep. And if these two add it up, uh, actually you go into an arithmetic. The sum of these two will be just now the destination station. So that becomes D. Yep. So we now have, is this the train we want to send? And uh, where do we want to send the train? So at the end, we can just hook all these together. If this is the train we want to send, then I output where we want to send the train. And that's actually slightly wrong, because that'll be a much larger number than where we want to send it. So we'll just pipe that into one last one, get the destination, divide it by 128, because our destination is 128 times the destination. I'll put it there. Now this goes into, yep, that arithmetic combinator here. And that should send the train off. So, if all of that is correctly wired up, fingers crossed, when I disconnect and reconnect this red wire, uh, we should write the destination into one of these memory banks, which I think they're all empty at the moment. Yep, good. We'll write it into one of these. At the same time we write it, it'll get back a signal saying, okay, send the train that's numbered, whichever number we just stored, send it off to this spot. There's the disconnect, and there's the connection done. And I did not see the train move. Nor was the data written. Hmm, hmm, hmm. You're good, you're good. Okay, what's going on here? You've got no value, why have you got no value? This green line has no value. Did I miss a con- yes I did, I missed this connection here. But when we connect this, ah, here we go. When we connect that, this should get a value, meaning we can now write our destination and our train number, which should write it to a memory bank and trigger this thing to send the train off. So we can actually now, hopefully see the train go. There we go. And it is off to our iron mine. That worked perfectly. Oh, it's so nice when your circuits work. Sure, this has taken us a while, but um, this is basically the last step that we'll need to deal with um, in terms of controlling our trains. Because now we can tell the train to go off. Uh, we still need to have the train, when it arrives, it needs to figure out where the next destination is, as well as uh, which set of inserters it needs to enable. At the moment it's fine because it's going to the uh, iron smelting area, so all the uh, inserters on the inserting side here will be used. But if it was going somewhere else, maybe we only wanted uh, two banks of these inserters to be turned on. Uh, so the train, it'll probably actually defaultly just go to the next spot because it'll be told to go uh, wherever. This constant combinator is telling it to go. Oh, and there is one more thing we have to do. We now have to erase that data from our uh, S and D because we've processed it and used it. So we should actually erase it from here. Which we can probably just use a similar setup to this. Where did they come? There. Okay. So the the red line is that we've got a destination. Can I connect the red line over to here? Yes. Okay. So if we've got a destination. 
Uh, yep, pass through that line there. And we also have it on this red line here. Which is fine, I'll just... This red line here. Turn it into a green line. So, if we've got a destination, uh, pass through everything. Also, negate our destination because we don't want it tainting our signals. And then, lastly, what we'll do get each input, negate it, and output again. Oops, you to there, you to there, and you on the green line, cross to both of them. Now you are from here, so you're the, you're the S signal supplier. Yeah. So supplier is the inside line here. Actually, that will be fine, and we'll set up a quick little circuit there, just to control um, getting rid of this value at the right spot. You go there. Actually, hmm, could I pipe this directly into this? No, I want to pipe it at the exact at the right moment. So, hmm. Put it down to here, into a memory cell. And what we'll want to do is when when this red is zero so it should be resetting this line at the same moment we can add this output to the same spot so that it just passes through as well and then i can set a reset on it okay yeah Keep it in time. So when red is zero, output all your input counts, which you'll just get from here. You will output it to there. And if anything is greater than zero, hmm, do we want anything greater than zero? No, no, no. What we'll do is get each thing times it by negative one output it and then just connect that in line cool so when red is zero this thing will output whatever this memory cell is holding which will um, get removed from the memory cell at the top line at the same point in time uh, it will go up to here which will negate it and feed it into the memory cell thus taking it out of that memory cell here. So we'll just copy this, put it, put it there. What are you missing? I mean, I could have just built it myself, but then I need to uh, set up all the wires and what have you. Yeah, we've got a lot more stations on the demand side, that's not what I would have expected. Wonder why. I have to look at that. Could be that the train is just 
Okay, so we're constantly going between the two. How much does the demand station have? 16,000. That should be enough that you shouldn't be requesting anymore. But there's a lot of requests here. Hmm. That's odd. Now we need to get the same signal. Now in this case it goes through that. I think this is out of sync. Oh no, okay, that's fine. So this red line here is the one that we want to use. So I used it on the green line, didn't I? Did I? No? Oh, okay, so that one. That makes sense. Cool. So both of our memory cells are now set up correctly. Uh, let's just... I kind of want to clear these. And then I probably have to reset them. Well, that's a, a good amount of time for an episode, actually. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. We've now got our two FIFO keys working. We've got our setup that will store where we're wanting these trains to go in this memory bank here. And we're sending the train off from the station. So in next episode, what we'll do is we'll deal with um, the bit of circuit up here. That will basically send a request down saying, you know, I've got train number 20, where should I send it? And uh, it's not only where should I send it, but which uh, bank of inserter should I enable to fill it up with? And then, yeah, I think that's pretty much the last step of this. That should be our trains all set up. And then we can just add more trains more stations and it will be really no hassle because uh, this thing is pretty extendable. And I'll have to look into the video I just recorded then to see if one of the lines turned on and off just then because they should have but I uh, didn't see. But yeah that's it for today. This is Jack B1024 signing off. Until tomorrow have a good day.